Well, good morning, Dean Boyder from In His Image Ministries in Durban, South Africa. Uh, we've got a bit of sun back today. We had a hectic rain in the beginning of the week, some cyclonic and tornado weather. Never seen a tornado on the land in South Africa, and I've been living here uh, from my birth. But yeah, I just you just get to thinking, you know, um, Genesis one twenty six. So fascinating because it's easy to read it in the sense that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are, are just discussing an idea. Um, let us make man and he'll look like us. As if it's just an idea and, and we're going to create this man and stick him on a planet and um, you know let him do work. And uh, great, you know, he's going to do the things we tell him, but um, that wasn't how it was intended. It was actually, if you read further into us, let us speaks about the Godhead taking responsibility uh, to participate in the man and that we were made in his image exactly for that reason, so that there would always be participation in us. In our, in our transforming, in our looking like his image. And so Romans 8.29 talks about it again, brings back the concept from Genesis 1.26 that there's participation in our building, in our making, in our transforming, in our brought into conf conforming to the image of the Son. And so... Genesis 1.26 makes us aware of that Jesus Christ was always the image that we were to be made into, even for Adam, and that there always was this plan of, of, of uh, cooperation, um, co-labor, joint heirship, joint inheritance, always in the mind of God. And um, as I was reading Ephesians chapter 5 and just looking at the role of the husband and the role of the wife again um, where uh, Paul makes it very clear that he's actually talking about the relationship between us and, and Jesus who has bonded himself to us in a covenant, everlasting covenant uh, that cannot be altered forever. The blood sealed the deal. There's no other covenant to come. There's nothing that can surpass it. This is the one where, where Christ is actively involved, actively participating to transform us. And so it says of Christ that, that not only did he give up his life for us, but he washes us and regenerates us with his word, with the cooperation of the Holy Spirit, that Jesus is our teacher the Holy Spirit is bringing the teaching, the Word of God, to renew us and to regenerate us, to transform us, to renew our minds and hearts, uh, to change us completely into the image so that He can present Himself, us, I mean, sorry, present to Himself, us, glorious, holy, blameless, just as the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit intended right in the beginning before the foundation of the world, the scripture says, Paul says it, that God predestined us to be holy and blameless in his sight. And so what a remarkable relief to understand that it is the action of the Father, the action of the Son, and the action of his Spirit by whom we were sealed until the final product when all of the faith that he started and all of the love that he started and all of the attributes of God and the nature of God and the authority of God and the dominion of God are all brought to fullness in us. Plan A. What a wonderful thing. What a release to know that it's not by human effort. It's not by me gearing myself up and putting more and more effort in. Carnality does not produce life, it produces death. No, it's by the yielding to God's process in me that He's doing it. 
He's bringing it to completion. He's bringing it into its fullness so that we can all stand perfect, the complete man in the earth. Glory to God.